Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printed. In this video, I want to talk about an alternative way of creating routes in Flask. So in all my previous videos, I used the fairly straightforward approach of creating routes in Flask using the uh, route decorator. So an example would be something like this, app.routes slash member, and then underneath the decorator, I have a function, uh, let's say member, I would do stuff in this function and then return something. And that would be my route for member. Well, this alternative way doesn't create routes in this fashion. It doesn't use decorators, it does something else. So this method of generating routes is uh, from the Flask Classy extension. So to install Flask Classy, you would just use pip install Flask Classy. I've already installed it, so I'm not gonna run this, but that's all you need to do to install it. Easy stuff. And then to use it, let me set up some of the uh, Flask code first. So from Flask, from Flask import Flask. I hate how it makes the F lower case. I need to change that setting. Okay, so I've imported Flask. I also need to import Flask Classy. So flask.ext.classy import Flask view. And we're going to be using this Flask view. So app is Flask name. And then if name is equal to main, run my app in debug mode. Whoops, app.run debug is true. And there's one more thing that I'm going to do here that you may not understand yet, but you will once I explain it. So I need to create a class. So I'm going to call it member view, and it's going to inherit flask view. And I won't put anything in it for the moment. And then member view dot register app okay so what I have so far is a view class this is what flask or classy is using so it's inheriting this flask view but classy is going to use this class to generate routes and then this register method on the class I just created that's just registering it on the app so um, the app knows where those routes are coming from it's coming from the member view class all right, so the first thing I'm going to do is add a git. So, or not a git, I want to start with an index, sorry. So index is going to take in self, and I'm going to return, this is the index. All right, so let me fire up my server, and it's running, and let's see what happens. So nothing's found on the index, but if I go to member, I get this. This is the index. So what has happened here? I have a route that's active, that's returning something, but I didn't declare anything. Or did I? Well, what I did was by creating this class, class or classy is going to take the class name, um, everything before the view, and create a route out of it. So since member comes before view, it creates the member route. And then inside of the class, this index method is saying whatever uh, the route is, the index will return this. So the very top of the route, I guess you can say. So what if I did something like this? Git self and let's say ID return the ID is stir ID. I probably don't have to use stir. So if I do that, it reloaded already. And then let's say one. It says the ID is one. If I say one, two, three, it says the ID is one, two, three. Well, again, I didn't explicitly create this route. Classy went ahead and made it for me. So the index returns just the index of whatever route you have. And git creates a git endpoint on that route. So you can specify an ID or any other value that you want, and it gets uh, created in the route, or you can use that route to do anything you want in here. So 
just like Git, there there are the analogous uh, RESTful methods. So like post, delete, patch, put. And if you know what those are, then you know exactly how they're going to work. Um, if you just request that route using the method, the HTTP method, uh, it will run that method for whatever um, you called it with. So what if I wanted to create something custom? So right now I'm only using special methods, index, git, post, whatever. Those are special. If I want to create my own inside of this method view, I could do that as well. So if I say member and then account, and I just have to use self again, and I'll return. This is the account page. So now, instead of one, two, three, I can say account, and I get the is the account page. I meant to say this, but you see what's happening there. So it's taking this account and it's appending it to the route that was created from the class. So what's happening here is after it finds all the uh, special methods in your class, it will start looking for custom ones. And with these custom ones, it will just create new routes for them. And then you can do whatever you want with them. So the reason why you will use something like Classy is for organization purposes. Uh, a lot of times you'll have a lot of routes that are for one specific thing and they can use a lot of common functionality and it would be best if they were all put in one place. So having them all in one class helps with this. Whereas if you're using the approach that I showed in other videos where you just use the decorators, then you can end up having uh, dozens or hundreds of routes just spread out everywhere. There's no, um, they're not categorized. They're not, they're just all over the place. And I mean, you can separate them by files, but having a class kind of, kind of enforces that relationship between different routes. Whereas a file, it's up to the programmer to um, keep the relationship going. So it really helps when you have a lot of routes. If you're writing a small application, then it really doesn't matter what you use because organization won't be a problem when your code is only 50 lines long. But if it's 5,000 lines long, then you may want to start looking into better ways of organizing your code. And Classy is one way to do that. There are also other features of Classy. I think I'll make another video on some of the more advanced features of Classy. So if you're interested in trying it out, you'll know what else it can do. But this is it for now. I just wanted to give you a quick intro to using Classy and Flask. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up down below. If you have any questions, feel free to ask and I'll reply to them in the comments. And if you like my channel overall, please subscribe. So thanks for watching and I'll talk to you next time.